uh, I have done my graduation from computer science and engineering uh, from the Kite Group of Institution, Ghaziabad, uh, and in 2020 year. And since then, I am working as a software developer with a strong focus on Java-based applications. And I have been using Springboard for the past three years. Uh, my experience includes building microservices, REST APIs, and data-driven applications using Springboard. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, my okay. Brief so, like, what's your preferred development environment and tool set for Springboard application? Okay. Uh, my preferred development environment from Spring Boot, uh, I use uh, uh, STS as IDE, uh, GitLab for version control, Maven for dependency management. Uh, yeah, I find this setup uh, very convenient to me. Okay, so like, can you describe the most recent project you worked uh, on using Spring Boot? Yeah, recently. Uh, I have worked with T-Mobile, so uh, it's a US-based telecommunication uh, company. So I was working on B2B portal where uh, multiple organizations connect and uh, uh, join that B2B portal and uh, they can uh, provide service uh, to their employees by their service uh, services like uh, internet services, uh, calling services, etc. So my yes, contribution, so, so. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So my major contribution was to develop the RESTful APIs, increasing scalability of the application, and working on bugs and designing uh, infrastructure architectures, etc. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like you said, your experience in Spring Boot and related technologies. So what are the key advantages of using Spring Boot over traditional Spring applications? Uh, Spring Boot uh, offers significant advantages like auto configuration, embedded server support. Uh, we have uh, Tomcat uh, that is embedded server support and easier dependency management. Uh, for example, we have uh, a lot of annotations like auto configure uh, and other. So by using those, uh, we can simplify our application and this reduces the boilerplate code and configuration setup and making it more efficient than traditional spring. Okay, that's fine. Moving on to my question, like, can you explain the concept of uh, dependency injection in spring and why it's beneficial? Uh, dependency injection is a core feature of spring, uh, allowing object to be injected at runtime rather than being hard coded. Uh, basically, it decouples the instantiation process, uh, making the code more modular, testable and maintainable. Okay, that's fine. So, what is the role of Spring Boot application annotation in a Spring Boot application? Like at the rate Spring Boot application annotation. Yeah, what is yeah. the meaning of that? Okay. What is the role of that? Okay, so basically this is the starting annotation to run any Spring Boot application and it's a convenience and annotation in the Spring Boot. It combines uh, three annotations uh, at the rate configuration, at the rate enable auto configuration, and at the rate component scan. And it's uh, uh, essential for starting up the Spring application context. Okay. Okay. So now you need to consider one point that based on auto configuration, how mm -hmm. does Spring Boot achieve auto configuration? Okay. Uh, Spring Boot achieves auto configuration automatically. Uh, I mean, uh, Inside Spring Boot, uh, there are a lot of codes that are already returned on the class path dependencies, and uh, it happens automatically, and it basically reduce the specifying beans and XML configurations. So yeah, okay. it's achieved. Yeah. So like, can you provide an example of that where auto configuration simplifies development? Ah, uh, okay. One second. Let me think. Yeah, a great example is the data source configuration. So in traditional Spring, you need to define data source beans uh, like only in Spring framework. But in Spring Boot, it auto configure a data source. And if it detects a data uh, based driver in the, in the class path. Okay. okay. 
So what are the steps to override a specific auto configuration? Uh, steps to override. So I think uh, we have, uh, as we know, we have application uh, dot property file uh, or YAML file in every Spring Boot project. So uh, to override a specific auto configuration, we can define our own beans. We can use the exclude attribute for of the enable auto configuration annotation and set it uh, the application properties file. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so moving on to the next section, uh, like you mentioned that you have experience in REST APIs and data driven mm -hmm. applications as well. So I'd like to point some questions related to that. So okay. what annotations are typically used to create RESTful services in Spring Boot? Uh, okay, so what annotations. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so while creating RESTful application or RESTful APIs, so first annotation is REST controller at the rate REST controller that is must uh, in order to uh, use a REST API. And uh, along with this, uh, we have several annotations like request mapping. So basically in the request mapping annotation, we add the path of API and uh, there are a few others uh, annotation also like get mapping, post mapping, put mapping. So these annotation define like, uh, I mean, what uh, this API is going to do, like whether it is a it is a post API, get API. So yeah, so these are the annotations that we typically use. So on what platform you are testing your APIs? Uh, Postman mostly. Postman, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so like I have another question related to REST APIs only. That how would you handle exceptions in Spring Boot uh, REST applications? Okay, so. Uh, previously, when I was working on my personal projects only, I mean, before working on any uh, MNC project, so I used to define exception uh, explicitly, like where, I mean, in let's say my uh, code is might throw an error in any service file. So I used to add the error there only. Let's say there are 10 services file and there are possibilities that error might come either of those 10 files. So I used to add uh, everywhere those errors in those, those particular files. But uh, when I was work, when I joined the MNC and uh, MNC projects and all, so I uh, found a different ways, uh, like uh, one uh, way uh, to write the error and that will cover all the files. So that's kind of uh, strategies uh, we use currently in our project and so we use okay. controller advice annotation ex at the rate exception handler so these are the global exception techniques uh, that i use nowadays to handle the exception okay. so it, will, it will consolidate all the services file at one position yeah, yeah. Handle the okay. yes okay so moving on to the next question so what approach do you take uh, for securing rest endpoints okay so uh, there are multiple approaches uh, that uh, secure the REST endpoints, but what I, uh, what we personally use in our project is uh, uh, JWT JWT or O uh, something like that O auth. So uh, these okay, are you mean the O auth uh, authentications. You yeah, yeah, authentication. Okay. So these uh, strategies and. Uh, and the, I mean, the all the configuration things, all the, I mean, hidden things are already there in the Spring Security package uh, that we that we can add in the POM file of the Spring Boot project. So uh, by adding the Spring Security, we can uh, use the feature of Secure these short auth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, explicitly for you might uh, while testing the APIs, you might be generating. Uh, the tokens like we are yeah yeah tokens authorization tokens. Mm -hmm. yeah Correct. and based on those, those tokens you will do the post request okay. Mm -hmm. okay I think you are quite aware about it so let me ask a next question later to Spring Boot itself is that uh, how like describe a Spring Boot project where you significantly improve performance because performance matters a lot nowadays mm -hmm. you know that, yeah, uh, yeah. and what techniques I I would also emphasize that what techniques do you use where okay uh okay one second in order to improve the performance yeah uh basically uh there might be a lot of techniques uh 
that improve the code performance but uh, what i used in my uh, development history is uh, i once i used the redis cache uh, while searching the database uh, again and again so instead uh, into look uh, instead looking into the database so once i implemented redis cache so that improved the performance yeah and uh, recently i was working on securing the rest api endpoints and uh, we found uh, from the ui side uh, one api might be calling multiple times so uh in order to enhance the speed we use encrona uh, asynchronous process in the spring boot so there is one annot annotation at the rate asynchronous so so these two techniques i used in my uh in my career and there might be a lot of techniques so yeah okay just a follow up question based on the answers you you have given that what is the meaning of asynchronous here how do they get asynchronous ah uh, okay so asynchronous basically means let's say we are calling three apis at a time so let's say first api is taking time so asynchronous means is we uh, we uh, we don't wait for the first api to be completed instead uh, we will we move to the second api and start processing that so this way we are hand handling our api asynchronously so it helps uh, enhancing the uh, spring boot system or application okay that's fine yeah okay so if you had uh, to scale a spring boot application to handle high traffic so what strat uh, strategy would you use uh okay so what is strategy so uh recently i said asynchronous redis so the i think i i'm not sure but i think those strategies uh, can help us to handle high traffic and but uh, uh, other than those uh, uh, the generic strategies would be like a load balancing database replication uh, so i think through these microservices technique we can handle the high traffic okay. yeah okay that's fine so i have another question for you like how would you modify an existing spring boot application to convert it into a serverless architecture uh converting a spring boot application to serverless architecture so actually uh, i haven't uh, worked on this i never converted uh, any spring boot application into the serverless architecture yet uh, but uh, i know uh, like there are some uh, spring boot functionality that helps converting the spring boot application to the serverless architecture so those are the inbuilt functions like spring cloud function and aws lambda so um, yeah so, mm -hmm. okay okay not an issue okay so moving on to the next question that how would you like have you heard about circular dependencies uh circular yes dependencies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when one uh, class is dependent on other, and the other is dependent on the current one. Let's say A is dependent on B, and B is dependent on A. So here, a circular dependency issue comes into the picture. And uh, uh, so, like, for, uh, if uh, yeah, so how would you address the issue of circular dependencies? That is my next question. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, uh, actually, what I know is. Uh, i think we can use setter injection uh to remove the circular dependencies or maybe constructor things uh but on the setter injection i'm sure like we can uh, handle the circular dependencies okay so like can you call, can you uh, like uh, you must have heard about callback function callback function uh, i think uh, regarding what uh next no, kind of function only it, it is used in multiple languages so in yeah, java yeah, framework yeah. also it so, mm -hmm. yeah. so i just wanted to know that uh, whether a callback function is kind, kind of a circular dependency or not uh i'm not sure of this okay not an issue so yeah. i think you answered most of my questions i have just one last question mm -hmm. so, uh, can you please write a java code to swap two numbers without using a temporary variable okay uh swap two numbers 
Uh, you mean? Uh, yeah. You need to write a Java code to swap two numbers without using a temporary variable. Okay, without using a temporary variable. Uh, <laughs> what was that two numbers without using the temporary variable? Temporary variables. Okay, one second. Let me just is equal to five. Six. Uh -huh. One second. <laughs> A plus B of uh, five plus six eleven into B eleven okay. A becomes eleven. B becomes eleven minus six. That is five. And A becomes mm, A minus B. Yeah, so this is the code A is equal to A plus B, B is equal to A minus B, and then A is equal to A minus B. So this way uh, we can uh, swap our numbers A and B. Okay. okay, okay, that's correct. Okay, yeah, okay. I believe that uh, we are good with the interview process. I don't see any other questions as of now. So I think we are good and uh, we'll inform the HR, she will let you know on the mail about the feedback. We'll give our okay. feedback to Ajara okay. and she'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.